Hey, hey, boys, what's happening? Today, I wanted to give you a couple tips on filtering and setting up some uh, custom math to help you in that quest. So uh, I'm working on tuning some transient fueling right now. And normally, we want to filter out transients, right? And I'm sure you've seen the formulas that I have or the filters that I have to help filter out some of that stuff so that you're only getting steady state data. But we need to do the opposite when we're dealing with transients. So how do we do that? So we can use some custom math and give us some visual feedback, which is going to be a lot better than just trying to create a filter, plugging it in, crossing your fingers, and hoping that it works. So when we look at this, the blue line is our map sensor, and this little red line is our wideband. Well, I want to build a chart just off of this transition. I don't care about this steady state over here, and I don't care about the steady state over here. This is the spot that I want. So how do we filter for that, and how do we know that we're actually doing it? So it all starts with developing some custom math. So you're going to go to Tools, Math Parameters, pick an empty spot. Let's just call this tip in and just for a minute, just to see if you like it. And we'll do a new variable and we're going to do map. Now, when dealing with this, you don't have to use map. So if we go over to the tune file, you can see that the transient fuel qualifications is going to either go off of the map or it's going to go off of TPS. So I'm using map. So we'll do KPA and we're going to use the slope function. And so this is, there's going to be two things that we're going to play with to make sure that we're getting what we want to get for our data. This value, this period value in milliseconds is one of those things. So I'm not sure what a good starting value is. So I'm just going to say 10 milliseconds and hit OK. And then we're going to say, uh, well, how much of a slope do we want it? What's our slopiness? So we'll say greater than 10. That's just kind of an arbitrary value. I'm not really sure if this slope is like, you know, y equals mx plus b, if this is m or what, but I don't know. Either way, so this is our qualification. So what we need to do now is if you saw the last video I did on setting up your torque converter uh, to modify your gear, reported gear, so you can get feedback, we kind of want to do the same thing. So we're going to wrap this whole thing around parentheses, and we'll just say equals 1. So in other words, if our slope in 10 milliseconds is greater than 10, return a 1, otherwise 0. So we'll come into here, and we're going to go back to our squiggly line generator, and we're going to say add series, and we're going to come down to user define. We'll do tip in, and um, let's see what we have. I don't really see anything. And I'm also looking at this number, and as I drag it, it's still zero. So that didn't work out. So let's go, no big deal. Let's just go in and change some numbers. So let's say, well, what happens if we make it 100? And we got to refresh it, unfortunately. So if we do tip in and do it again, I still don't see any. Oh, wait, we do have something. Maybe it'd help if I change the color. I'll make it a nice lipstick red. All right, so now we have some data. And let me zoom out a little bit here. Or not zoom out, but let's just change this max. If we do it to 1.1, we kind of have a nice little feedback, right? Everything inside this box meets the qualification because I want to build a chart off of this and I want to see exactly what's going to be included in that chart. So when I zoom in, sure enough, I can see, well, here's my slopiness and what do we do? A hundred milliseconds and 10, whatever the slope is, this meets it. But, and it, it kind of looks like uh, this tip in, I went rich, which is the opposite, right? Most of these tip ins, if we get any more qualifications, well, dang it, there's another one. Went rich. I swear most of these are going lean. Here we go. So here we go. We have a positive map transition, and we have the classic going lean. So 
we're going to want to check a few of these other ones in here. So here's here's probably a good example where we see this map transition, and this is the first thing that happens, right? The air pressure changes in the manifold. We have to then wait for air to fill the cylinders, then we have to wait for combustion. Then we have to wait for the exhaust to go down to the wideband O2 sensor. It has to be sniffed out and reported. And so we do have this delay in here. So we probably need to include this a little bit more. So let's go back to tools. Tip in. Let's just change this to 250. And we can make this a little bit less selective. But if we do five, we should have more red boxes in general. So let's go back in here, tip in, and change this back to dot one because I like my boxes. And so this looks a little bit better, right? We're still missing this other random mystery spot over here, but we captured the main part of this tip in and the overall lean section in here. So that's when we build the chart, should be a pretty good indication that we do have some problems that need to be attacked. And so here's another one, although this is lean even going into it, but we do have another positive map transition and we're staying lean. So this is probably pretty good, right? We can see overall our EQ error has gone lean. It is getting better, but it's still lean for the most of this positive transition. So you're going to want to go through here and you're going to want to mess with all of these things. So. And when I say mess with these things, that's going to be changing this period of time in milliseconds and then how selective we're going to be with this slopiness factor. Now, we can also see that we have some classic tip out and going rich. So we want to be able to report off of those things too. Here's this lonely guy right here. I sure wish. I could report on that. Well, you know what? It's easy. It's going to be just the opposite for the most part. So we'll copy this. We're going to do tip out. And we're going to paste this in here. And we're just going to say then, same thing, but we're going to change this sign to less than. And then we're going to make it negative. And we're going to go in and let's just duplicate this bad boy and do tip out. Make that point one. And now to eliminate confusion, how about tip in? Let's just make this guy green. So here we go. So um, positive transition covered in green. And now we have our negative transition. And it's capturing that as well. So again, for both of these, you're going to want to play with the milliseconds and the slopiness factor. But now we have some really good feedback of what's going to be included in our charts. Now, once you develop those, you'll just you'll need to copy it to your clipboard because when you come into here, you're just going to have to paste this formula inside of your filter. We can't reference, you notice there's no hyperlink, right? Like here we have these hyperlinks. I can't point it to the formula that you just created. So you just copy and paste it in here. And then once you do, you know, you can still play with this, right? We could do 250 and we could do 10 like that. And we can see how the data changes. Totally up to you. And in here we just have the EQ error ratio. And then down here we have our whatever columns rows and columns that we have for the axis to find in the editor, which in general, whenever you're going to be making um, charts inside of the scanner, you're going to want to mirror whatever data model that you have in the editor. In this case, we have intake valve temperature. I have Fahrenheit. Um, maybe you have Celsius or Kelvin. I don't know. And then we have manifold absolute pressure. You just right click column axis copy labels, and then you can come into here, right? And then you can paste it in, and there you have it. And it's the same thing for the KPA. I won't necessarily do it, but you right click, you do row axis, copy labels, and then paste it right into there, and now you have your charts. And so 
we have a tip in and we have a tip out. So uh, hopefully this helps you. And if it did, I'll see you in the winner's circle.